Magic Overtime with Dante and Galante is brought to you by Tobacco Free Florida. So you guys realize that if it wasn't for me and my performance in Subaru League, that the show would not exist. He brings up an interesting point there, George. It was because of Summer League we got the internet show. Right. Because of the internet show we got this show. Summer League 07. Yeah. It was a great time. Could that you play Summer League 09 so we could <laughs> get something bigger than this? I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> Go to think. We were we were crediting Travis Diener this whole time with our success. But turns right. out it, was, it was me. All right. It was me. People actually tuned in to watch me. Yeah. Probably. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> probably so. Probably so. Just as much as they tuned if, in to listen to me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Summer League is not the best basketball that I've ever seen. No, it's pretty awful. It's pretty awful. But uh, we appreciate you getting us our start here. You got us in a no, studio. This it, is nice. The genesis, the birth. Yeah, you were there. For of it. the show. Is it good when Rick walks right in front of the yeah. camera that time? Yeah. Okay. That's a, that's a keeper? Let's try, to, let's try not to, to have that happen again. That was it. <laughs> From our Magic Studios in Orlando, Florida, this is Magic Overtime with Dante and Galante. And welcome to Magic Overtime with Dante and Galante. And we are pleased to be joined in our Orlando Magic Studios by Magic guard J.J. Redick. And, J.J., what would you think of that open? What would you think of that, that whole intro there? It's very reminiscent to the opening of uh, Anchorman, <laughs> Channel 7 News <laughs> with Ron Burgundy. Well, there's like one it. thing we want to show you. Did you guys base it off that? Yeah, well, we did. We did okay. base it off. It kind of has that feel, right? That yeah. whole Anchorman feel? Yeah, that whole. You don't like when I'm looking skyward? Hometown news. Kind of, kind yeah. of deal. Well, there's like one thing it. that we really want to draw attention to, and that's if we could take a look at George's performance. Right? Look at this. How, I mean, he hammed. <laughs> how much does George ham it up? This I'm, is not, I'm not sure what he's doing I'm with that metal. I'm a professional. I'm a professional. I like that pose right there. Oh, oh man. That's going to go on my tombstone right there. That should be your Christmas yeah. card. Well, it JJ, we're going to have a lot of fun with you, uh, probably at your expense during the next 25 minutes or so here. Yeah. So, yeah. But, but you're a good sport. And want to talk about the Open there. You're, you're really going to take direct credit for us having a TV show as well. You should. I don't want to take direct credit. I don't want to give myself too much credit, but um, you know, I feel like, as I said, that I was there at the genesis, mm -hmm. the birth of this show. Um, I mean, I told you guys before. I mean, I tuned in this past summer league, How about that? not to watch the game. I think it was like Chicago, Indiana, and I just wanted to hear your commentary. Something about Jason eating Andro <laughs> right. pills. I How, can't remember. How'd we do? Jason, <laughs> we it was good. It was good. Jason I, Rivera, our trainer. I tuned out after about 10 minutes, but it was pretty good. Yeah, well, I don't play. <laughs> that's, that's nine minutes longer than the normal uh, <laughs> listener actually listens to. Normal audience. Yeah. Well, JJ, we want you to meet the next member of our broadcast team. He's back in the control room. He is Mad Dog. Mad Dog, how are you? Doing great, guys. Can't complain. You, uh, nice oh. hat. <laughs> Thanks. I you like Dunkin' Donuts. Got to represent JJ. Yeah. He put always comes put here a right little plug work. in. Yeah, he comes, always comes here right from work. <laughs> does the show, which is nice. Does he look like a mad dog? Would you have guessed he was a mad dog? No, I don't know his personality, though. <laughs> yeah, think be. Charles Oakley, could, Rick Mahorn. Could be one of those ironic nicknames. Yeah, I think it is. <laughs> could <Yeah>. be. <laughs> what about you? you have any nicknames, JJ, growing up? Anything that you can share on the show? We're on after 1230, so you could probably. Oh, yeah. Um, no nicknames I can really think of. You know, my name is a nickname. Yeah. So that's about it. And explain that. It's a nickname for? Uh... JJ, <laughs> <laughs> fair good, fair good one. I did have a nickname in college. Um, you know, Reddick's my last name, Got and that, right. my friends knew that. I hate when people call me Reddick. I don't know why. It just oh, okay. annoys me. So I like when people call me by my first name. So my friends, to chide me, would call me Reddick just to annoy me. And one night, one of my friends was a little drunk, and he said like, Shreddick. <laughs> we we're like what did you just say <laughs> and he's like Shkredic. <laughs> so so my friend started calling me Skredic, which eventually evolved to Skremzik and then naturally me, yeah and then it became Mick Skremzik like it was just a whole big yeah, thing a whole big okay thing. well that's good to know alright Skremzik yeah. <laughs> Well, go ahead, George. George you I, got no, I got. I mean, I thought it was your turn, but we're gonna go. We went to uh, RedicLive.com. Mm -hmm. We Good checked website. Out, we checked out a lot of the uh, the pages and the pictures and and, and a little bit, but uh, it it talks about your poetry. Mm -hmm. Talk about how you got into poetry and and I, there's not a lot of people that are into poetry these days. No, there's really not. Um, I think the, the the two influences on me for my poetry were my eighth grade English teacher, Mrs. Stefan. Mm -hmm. um, Naturally, who that was one of the course requirements that we had to write poems. So I got into it that way. But also, my uh, grandfather died that year, and my mom is my mom's dad. And seeing her kind of struggle through that period of time, uh, poetry became an outlet for me, and uh, and I've used it as an outlet uh, ever since. 
Um, I made made the mistake of having some stuff put on the web internet, you know, for the bloggers to um, right to criticize, to a criticize, bit. and yeah. make fun of. But uh, you know, it's something that I do for me. I don't I don't do it for anybody else. Well, this is interesting, and fans may be able to relate with this. Galante pulled one of your poems. If you want to go ahead and read that, right? This is this is actually I thought it was a really good one. It says oh, thanks, now, man. It says, <laughs> yeah. it says now this is a story. All about how my life got flipped, turned upside down. <laughs> right. And I'd like to take a minute just to sit right there. I'll tell you how I became the prince of a town called Bel Air. Mm-hmm. That's very that. original. I did. And I, <laughs> and I still make commission off that. Every time the show comes out, I get a check every month. Nice. Well, that's impressive. From, from NBC. It's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, JJ, we'll talk about uh, you know, some sort of recreational activities that you get, you know, get into outside of basketball. You're a big fan of video games, right? Well, With that rumor I, thrown around you yeah, were in Halo and yeah, all that. Sort of I used to be oh, back to back be. in the college days. Okay, and then my rookie year, uh, me and my roommate at the time, who was a college buddy, um, basically had a, a FIFA soccer death match. Oh, that now we FIFA's kept a good. running tally. Yeah, and it, you know, I I put a hole in the wall from throwing a remote. Like nice. it was pretty intense. You have and to throw it hard to get a hole in the wall from a remote control. It's still there. <laughs> it's still in there. So all those people that are looking at my house right now, <laughs> you know, trying to buy it. <laughs> They noticed the hole in the wall. Um, no, but it's uh, it's something that I, I kind of stopped doing. I just kind of grew out of that stage. Um, one thing I'm into, though, is, is movies. I mean, I, that's kind of what I do on the road Right, is uh, dinner and a movie. And um, I've got a, a massive DVD collection at, at the house. So di- so you treat yourself to dinner and a movie, or, or how does <laughs> how does this work? Is there somebody with you, or how does dinner and Sometimes a movie? Sometimes people are with me. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> no, uh, you know, I... I this year's been a little different for me, um, figuring out who I hang out with on the road, because last year I hung out with uh, Pat Garrity, yep. Carlos Arroyo, and James Augustine, yeah. and right. all those guys are gone. Does that say something? <laughs> <laughs> I'm next to go. No, I, I don't know. Um, so this year, you know, I, I, I hung, hang out with Joe, uh, Marcin, and, and O'Donnell. Uh, that's kind of who I've been going to the movies with. We saw Valkyrie. Um, Decent movie. You just saw that the other night. My girlfriend I, and I, I didn't saw like it. it. You didn't like it? I didn't like it. I was just kidding. I didn't either. <laughs> <laughs> no, I heard, though, if, if you're into World War II, then the movie's okay. But right. if you're expecting, like, a big action. I'm a historian, and, and yeah. that movie sucked. Wow. <laughs> well, fair enough. All right. Maybe, but maybe, I, if, you're not into, maybe yeah. if you're not into World War I did, II. Then. I did um, see Benjamin Button the other day, though, with Brad Pitt. Now, what did you think of that? It's two hours and forty-seven minutes, and I would have sat through another two hours and forty-seven. See, minutes. now I go the it opposite. It was a fascinating on that one. movie. I thought it was fascinating. Did you? It yeah. is. It is fascinating. It is an interesting story. But I, when it was all done, I would like to have had that time back. I think. <laughs> the, the three hours. The three hours. <laughs> that's, that's a long time. That, that, that was my time. take for a movie that's not like up to Braveheart quality. I, I kind of agree. Now, with what you. movies do you enjoy? Not recent movies, but I know you're a fan of The Departed. You the know, part of this great that, movie, right? and I've probably seen that movie, <laughs> you know, twenty five times. I mean, it's always on HBO, and I'll, I'll just flip it on. Um, so it's a movie I quote with yeah. regularity, <laughs> although for this show right. I probably won't quote it because yeah. there's some naughty language. Right. But hey, we are on hey. late. <laughs> we're, very, we're on very late. Is this censored? This show <laughs> censored. <laughs> this is censored. No, um, Swingers though is my all time favorite movie with Vince Vaughn and John Favreau. I just think it's a genius movie. And uh, oh yeah, absolutely. That's a classic. Well written, well directed, well shot, um, and and obviously Vince Vaughn's hilarious. So you're also an entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that. Well, <laughs> we've seen this commercial. If you have if anybody oh. has NBA TV, we've seen this commercial. If you, yeah, if you watch NBA TV, <laughs> maybe yeah. every five seconds we've seen this commercial. J.J. Reddick, college basketball's all-time greatest shooter. Rick Torbett, a coach who had three consecutive teams shoot over 40% from three. A streak no American pro team has ever accomplished. Better Basketball, producer of the world's preeminent basketball improvement videos. What happens when these four unite? I want to get that little kid in dribbling here. How do we get that kid? (laughs) He was pretty impressive. That's a good cover shot. Now it's just, it's it's on constantly. Constantly. It's like a never-ending loop. Now, I, I want to get the voiceover guy for that too, because he's better basketball <laughs> from JJ. You know, Reddick. it's it's so annoying too because uh, literally every game in warmups, mm-hmm. a friend from the other team, a kid I know from the other team, will be like, "Better basketball, what's up, dude? <laughs> better basketball, the greatest shooter ever." And you get to like Capono those- yesterday. We you know we played Toronto yeah. yesterday. Capono, of course, who probably is the best shooter in the NBA. <laughs> let's be honest. You know, he's he's giving me. Uh, 
giving me crap about. Are you, getting more, uh, are you getting more crap about the commercial or the jersey they make you wear? <laughs> <laughs> nice I gender. still have that jersey. Yeah, absolutely. Locked, locked away somewhere. Framed on your wall. No, that, I like that, the big logo, that, oh, BB. Yeah. <laughs> Better basketball. That one's not getting framed. <laughs> All right, JJ, we'll hang in there. we got a lot more with JJ Reddick. And also, uh, this, this week, we want to give away a pair of tickets. Maybe we'll have JJ help us out. we got tickets to the Boston Celtics. Game. January 22nd. That yeah. is a big game, right, against the Boston Celtics. Yeah. You can text overtime to 57375. Or you can email us at magicovertime.com. You can send us some questions, or you can flat out just say, I want the tickets. Right, right. We're going to pick them at random for January 22nd against the Celtics. How many are you giving away? Can we two. get two? Two lower two. bowl tickets. Oh, that's great. Yeah. It was hard to get those two. Yeah. I mean, can we get this on redicklive.com too? We'll get that Boston okay. Celtic. Give it, we will tie it all in. I'd love to. I, I love to. joint promotion. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Great. Cross promotion. <laughs> yeah. That'd be nice. Magic Overtime with Dante and Galante is brought to you by Tobacco Free Florida. 